Hey everyone, Steven here from Board Game Weekenders. Today we're going to review from Capstone Games, Juicy Fruits. This is a family game where it's kind of like your own slide puzzle that you have your own personal island that you're trying to get fruits to turn in uh, to fulfill ship's orders and to buy business tokens to add to your island board. Let's see how to play it and then I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so here we have the game of Juicy Fruit set up. The one thing that I have off to the side is the scoreboard. Everyone will have a score marker and you move on here as you score points, but I'm gonna set this to the side just so we can kind of see the kind of player board area and kind of the main board area. Now, everyone you'll see will have access to these fruit supplies, which are these large uh, fruit tokens here. You also have the business board, which will have business tokens depending on the number of players. You're simply gonna fill this column with five tokens for each player playing the game. So in a two player game, we would fill these two columns, three player, you'd fill this column, and four player, all, again, of the tokens um, would be filled on this board. You also would go through the ice cream tokens and the milkshake tokens and put them in the according uh, spot. And then you would move the license marker to the correct spot for the number of players. So in a two player game, three player game, or four player game, this license uh, marker basically just dictates how long the game will end. And as you're uh, buying these business tokens and, uh, ice, and getting ice cream and milkshakes, this will keep advancing to the end of the game where it reaches this X. Each player uh, area will look like this with an island board. You'll have a postcard that just shows your player color to the other uh, players. Again, you'll have a wooden disc that you'll put on the score tracker. And then you'll get five collector tokens with your player color back. You will flip them to that side. You'll shuffle them up and then you'll put them on these kind of pawn spaces on your board so the orientation looks like this so that everyone kind of starts with a different mix of fruits in different spots at the start of their boards. You'll then finally place these ship tokens around the island of the board until you have 12 of them. There are 25 green and orange boats and in the rule book it will tell you how to place them in certain spots, the orange and the green boats, or you can just mix them all together and place them randomly around your board. Once you pick a starting player, we will get started and Juicy Fruit is played over a series of rounds in which each player takes a turn until again, this license marker reaches this X. You'll finish that round so everyone has an equal number of turns and then we will go to final scoring. So what does a player turn look like? Let's take a look. The first step of your turn is to move one of your collector tokens or move one of your mobile business tokens. Your collector tokens are these little fruit basket tokens that you have five at the start of your board. Your mobile business tokens are one that you would maybe buy from the business board and then you would later have it on your board to use. So you would move either one of your, again, collector tokens or one of your mobile business tokens. So let's talk about how moving one of your collector tokens works. To move one of your tokens, you'll just pick one of them and slide them any number of spaces as long as it's not blocked by one of your uh, boat orders or by another collector token, and you'll gain that many fruit of the selected, again, fruit type. So if I move this here, I would get one lime. I can have an unlimited capacity um, of fruit in my supply. I can't move the tokens diagonally, um, and I can stop uh, the token short. So it's not like I have to move it fully to here. I could just gain one of the red fruit if I wanted instead of moving it the full two to get two. So this kind of results in a slide puzzle of you sliding uh, these fruits around and around. Um, we'll see how you fulfill orders that later your board will get more open. So you'll be sliding them all over the place collecting fruit. Now again, if you did have one of these, again, mobile business tokens, and I'll show you how you get these in a bit. But when I move one of these, it simply has a slash to show that when I move this, I will take either one of these fruits. So if I moved it one space, I would take either a banana or an orange. You'll see that these plus one means that you take an additional one of what you took. If I moved it twice, I would get again two of my choice and an additional one because of that plus one. So that's how the mobile business tokens work. Okay, so step one, move one of your, again, collector tokens or again, a mobile um, token. And then you can either supply one of your ships for step two of your turn or claim one of the business tokens. So let's talk about how that works. To supply one of your ships, you'll simply turn in the fruit for the orders of one of your ships around the board. So if I had two limes and two oranges, I could fulfill this boat's order. I will score four victory points in this kind of sun symbol here, and I will just put it to the side of my board. So this kind of frees up some space on my board that later I could you know, use to get more fruit maybe and make it easier to access my slide puzzle. 
and it also being one of the major ways to score victory points. So again, when I move this off, I move again my marker on the point track. It's also important to note that you can only fulfill one of your ships on your turn. You can't fulfill multiple ones. Instead of supplying one of my ships, I could instead claim a business token. In each of the rows here, you'll see that each of the tokens has a cost on the left, depending on what row you take it from. So if I wanted one of these tokens, it would cost me a lime and a banana. I would score a victory point on, again, the point track, and then I would move the receipt token down one, advancing the end of the game. I would then take one of the tokens in that row, so maybe I want to take this museum for example, and I'll place it on my board. Now let's talk about the types of different business tokens. First we have the small venue tokens. These just give you victory points um, when you play them, so this will give me four points. It also gives me these stars that some other uh, tiles might interact with, so I just have to place this token somewhere on my island when I buy it and score the victory points. The next type of business token is a placeholder token. These are for large venues that we have on the side of the business board here. So this says I would take a size two eight point um, large venue tile. So I'd actually just discard this business token. I would take the eight point large venue. And again, I would have to place this somewhere on my player board. So later after I fulfilled orders and hopefully cleared enough space on my island, I could place this large venue somewhere on my board. Now there are actually larger uh, square ones here that you can see this um, again, placeholder token for the larger 18 point tile. And again, I would have to fit that somewhere on my island, which kind of clogs up my slide puzzle. The next type of business token is the stall tokens, and these get, are the only really end game scoring points. So this, for each of the symbols I have on my island of this uh, fork and spoon, I would score four points. And these are for, again, those uh, advanced collector tokens. You can see they have a symbol here uh, in the top uh, left there. So for each of these symbols on my island, I would get, again, four points for that. And there are different ones. There's one that gives you points for stars and uh, different boats that you've uh, shipped out and different things. Again, we've talked about the uh, advanced collector tokens. Again, the same thing where you pick one of each and then you get an additional one when you move it on your board. Again, you would just place this on your board when you bought it. And then finally, the one, the last of the business tokens is the ice cream cart tokens. So these have a specific ice cream on the left. So this is orange and lime ice cream. And it also has a milkshake there. Now, when I buy this token, again, I place it somewhere on my board. And then later, let's say my board was like this and I had a free spot. When I move my ice cream cart token, I can produce that ice cream or a milkshake, depending on the number of spaces I move. So if I move this one, two spaces, I can make two ice cream tokens. Now, where are these ice cream tokens? They're down here on the business board. So here, an orange and a lime, I could take one of these two ice cream tokens. I'm going to take the one that gives me the eight points for that. Um, and I would just turn in that fruit that I had in my supply. If I move this twice and I had two limes and two oranges, I could make two of these eight point ice cream tokens. So this is a really good way to get some extra victory points throughout the game. And when you remove the last token from one of the ice cream stacks, you actually advance the receipt token furthering the end of the game. Now, You'll see here that there are 10 or 12 pointers for three fruits. So depending on the business tokens that are out, if that ice cream is available, you can always make a milkshake um, that is just two fruit of the same type. And then I can get a milkshake for three points um, scored at that point. And you'll keep taking turn after turn. Again, step one, moving one of your collector tokens, getting the fruit from that, and then either fulfilling a ship's order or buying a business token. And once that receipt hits that X at the uh, end of the board there, you'll finish that current round, and then you'll add up your total points. The only end game points would be, again, from those stalls that give you extra victory points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. I did want to point out on the back of the uh, scoreboard, there's an alternate scoreboard with the Juice Factory, in which everyone will have a player token. And during the game, you can pay fruit to move it along, and you'll actually gain um, points depending on when you move it, but you just have to have certain fruit available. There's also a, a business token called the Lemonade Stand that interacts with this bottom part here. So just something that you can add to the game. Okay, everyone, there's an overview of how to play Juicy Fruits. Now let's get to my final thoughts. Let's start with some of the negatives I have. 
there's not a ton for this game. This is a solid family game. I will say for me, this didn't like stand out in the family weight crowd. It's a little bit above average, I would say, but it wasn't one where I was like instantly, yes, let's play this again. And we can play this with many different age groups. And this has a ton of replayability. This didn't kind of fit the bill for me. I feel like with the few plays that I had, um, I kind of seen everything that's there. Like this slide puzzle is a fun thing to do over and over again, but you're still fulfilling the orders. There's 20 or so of these, again, um, business tokens. So it's not like a ton, like you're gonna be seeing the same ones over and over again. And you're gonna be doing the same thing each game. So I think that's kind of why it doesn't reach that upper echelon is nothing um, there's kind of to dig my teeth into. But I think this, again, game from Capstone Games is meant to be a family game. It's not meant for someone like me maybe who has a ton of games that wants a lot of replayability and depth to it. Um, this would be kind of, again, a great gift to get to somebody who, again, doesn't play a lot of games that wants to play with their family. So I might not be the target audience, so kind of take that kind of negative with a grain of salt there. I will say one thing that I personally don't like um, is with the receipt token that kind of tracks the end of the game. Um, I kind of like it where it's a set number of rounds or like something occurs that makes a, uh, the game end rather than the players kind of controlling the game end and kind of getting the rug swept out from under you sometimes. Um, depending on how, how fast people buy these business tokens, the game could end relatively quick before you even get to do much on your board. But again, that's all kind of player controlled. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of a weird thing. Also, um, the milkshake and ice cream uh, business tokens, I think, are super powerful. Like, if you don't get one, like, you can turn in two fruit for, like, eight points, whereas, like, some of these larger ship tokens, you turn in, like, five or six fruits and only get six. Yes, this clears space off on your board, but it seems like it once you get the ice cream token out there and just getting those fruits, it seems like that's a really easy way to get a ton of points. Um, other than that, um, I wasn't a huge fan of the juice factory mode. You did have like extra something to think about as you move it along and get points when you turn in certain fruits. Um, but it was just kind of something little to add on kind of point salad -y. But again, that's something again that you might like. All right, let's just do some of my positives about juicy fruits. Like I said, um, this is a great family game, I think. This is a great gift for someone. Um, this is one that you might want to have access to. It's just I'm not sure that you might necessarily need to own. I love the bright, beautiful artwork. I love the slide puzzle mechanic of moving your tokens and clearing up space and adding in spaces that clog it back up again. That's a neat puzzle to do over and over again. Um, I do like how, again, you can buy tokens that you have to figure out where to add on your board and how to move them. The components are great. The tiles are good. These big, uh, chunky uh, fruit pieces. So it's just something that's very inviting. This game, again, will just naturally pull people in and it'll be easy to get them to sit down and uh, teach this quick turn structure, which I love, like move a token and then buy one of these or fulfill an order. It's super simple. It's super easy to teach. And I really like it for that. All right, let's get to my final score. So for Juicy Fruits, I'm going to give a seven and a half to. It's a really good, solid family game. If someone offers, again, that they want to play this game, I'd happily play it. I think for me, I just think in my few plays, I've seen what it has to offer. I've seen the slide puzzle mechanism and fulfilling orders. If you want to do that over and over again, and that's your jam, I totally could see why you would love this game. For me, I just kind of feel like I've seen everything, um, and I don't think I really need to own this game, but I'd be happy to have access to it. So that's kind of where I am uh, with Juicy Fruits. It's a really solid family game. I don't know if it's in the upper echelon, but it's certainly one that I would definitely recommend for you to check out. So until next time, guys, um, we'll see you. Thank you so much for watching.